just go through a red light there. Copy. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Yeah, south on Wilbur. Definitely Mercedes Benz. Scott Reif and Air 7 HD. We're following a pursuit now that started in the Burbank area on the 5 freeway northbound and now is in Northridge, southbound on Wilbur, away from Devonshire. It's a black Mercedes Benz sedan, uh, possibly stolen. The suspect, it looked like it was a male. We can only see one person on board the vehicle. That was a driver when he went in tight with uh, our extreme vision a moment ago. Uh, again, southbound on Wilbur. At times, though, traveling at a high rate of speed, up to 100 miles an hour. And even here in this residential neighborhood of Northridge, traveling now, you can see close to 70 miles an hour. Posted speed limit in this area is probably closer to 35 or 40 miles an hour. Now, LAPD has a helicopter overhead. They're the agency that is involved in the pursuit of this point in time. It was on the 5 freeway where speeds uh, got up to 100 miles an hour. CHP was involved. And now that we're in the Northridge area, southbound on Wilbur, LAPD has taken over. Now, they may try and do a pit maneuver on one of these corners if the suspect continues to slow down to that rate that you saw right there in that intersection. We're still on Wilbur southbound just at Plummer Street. And if from time to time the suspect traveling up to uh, or speeding up to uh, extremely high rates of speed, um, LAPD has units in the area. They talked about doing a spike strip. Uh, that is a possibility if it continues on Wilbur long enough or further enough to the south. We'll have to see. At some point, I believe Wilbur comes to a stop here, and the suspect will have to uh, turn. Uh, Wilbur ends, I believe, before you get to Roscoe. Uh, we could tell it was uh, one person on board, a man, uh, wanted for possibly a stolen vehicle and burglary. We didn't see any other people on board the vehicle. And at this time, it looks uh, like the suspect car has now made a eastbound turn, headed back towards Cal State Northridge uh, on Nordoff Street. So we're getting into an area where there could be a lot of people out on the roadways, a lot of, on these streets here, especially as we get uh, close to the college. Uh, we haven't seen the vehicle hit any other cars. We've seen uh, the vehicle swerve from time to time, in and out of lanes, drive indecisively, come to a stop, see the officers behind them, and then start to take off again. You see the vehicle slowing now. And hopefully what will happen here, the suspect will just give up, pull into this parking lot, realize he's not going to get away, and they'll be able to take him into custody without incident. But when you have a vehicle pull into a parking lot like this, I don't believe so. They came back possibly stolen. We didn't get that for certain, and the vehicle is now southbound on Reseda Boulevard in the Northridge area. If you're familiar with this area, there's a lot of travel in, uh, on Reseda Boulevard, and now we're seeing the suspect really start to make uh, some decisive turns here, driving erratically, and that's when these things get dangerous. But yeah, Giovanna, we picked it up on the 5 freeway, uh, traveling northbound, uh, coming uh, there. It looks like he's gotten behind a vehicle and stopped. And unless he tries to back up, which he did, that, now that vehicle in front of him saw the patrol cars coming and just stopped, trapping the suspect for a moment. Boy, that can be pretty dangerous. I understand, though, if you're in a car and that happens, it's probably best to stop or try and get out of the way. Now we have him coming south on Reseda at Parthenia, and it looks like looking both ways and rolling through a red light. So we have a suspect at this point that is desperate, and that's what makes these pursuits uh, so dangerous. But it started on the 5 freeway up to the Burbank area, uh, came up the 5, got off on Roxford, I believe, then came back south on the 405 to Devonshire. 
Devonshire westbound into this area of Northridge. Swerved around on a couple of streets, now on Reseda Boulevard southbound. And there's a lot of shops on Reseda Boulevard, some construction going on in some areas. And this is the spot where it could really get dicey. LAPD at one point in time really pulled off. They went to a surveillance mode. But it looks like right now they do have a helicopter overhead keeping surveillance on, the, on this individual. And if we pull out a little bit, you can see the patrol cars are still right behind. And they don't want to push this suspect and get him into a situation where he's driving faster and faster and faster. But 70 plus miles an hour under Cedar Boulevard is extremely dangerous. Um, I'm not certain if it was uh, Burbank police that were on it or LAPD and then CHP assisted them. So we, we haven't been able to track down exactly where it started. But when we go in tight like this, you know, we follow these pursuits. Uh, open up here. I want to see what he's going to do as he goes around some of this traffic. We go in tight because we want to try to determine whether or not there's more than one person in that vehicle. There's some debris in the back seat. Uh, there could be someone underneath that. You just never know. There could be someone in the trunk. Uh, I mean, that has happened before. We have seen that before. Uh, and, yeah, we, we couldn't really identify what that was. But, really, from what we can tell, it appears to be just uh, the male that you see, the male driver, uh, here on Reseda Boulevard. Uh, we don't know originally uh, exactly where this originated. We just know it was on the 5 freeway northbound up through Burbank, traveling at extremely high rates of speed possibly stolen and the suspect is a burglary suspect according to some of the information that we have now sometimes you get that stuff initially and it doesn't always pan out but that's what we are being told at this point in time and and here's a red light and you can see the suspect at least is looking both ways but desperate enough desperate enough to run through that light and continue to try and get away from the officers Well, he definitely appears to have control of the vehicle. We haven't seen any turns where it looked like he was going to lose control, uh, which, you know, sometimes you follow these, and if the, someone's under the influence of drugs or alcohol, you can sort of tell they're just a little behind on their turns. Uh, this individual seems to have everything planned out. At this point, it appears the suspect knows that officers are behind him. Obviously, he must know he's going to be taken into custody, and now it's just a waiting game. It's just a matter of when this ends, and we hope it ends peacefully without... Uh, any damage to vehicles, but you can see how close the suspect's getting to some of those cars. And then obviously, of course, we hope this ends without anyone getting hurt. We're still southbound on Reseda Boulevard, uh, past Victory Boulevard. If the suspect continues south on Reseda, there is an on-ramp to the 101 freeway. As I look ahead, I don't see a lot of stop traffic. There's a couple of pockets of stop traffic on Reseda Boulevard before that on-ramp to the freeway. Uh, but uh, CHP, excuse me, LAPD has backed off just a little bit. And you can see uh, here once again as it comes up on the intersection at Topham Street, the suspect has slowed. And boy, these bus crossings are really dangerous. We have a lot of incidents. There you go again, running up to a red light. And fortunately, the suspect has enough concern for his own safety that he's not just running through these lights uh, without looking. We've seen that before, too. Uh, but... Uh, no doubt about that. It, it's just, um, you know, it's so dynamic. You don't know what's going to happen. Uh, it's a danger to everybody who's out on the street right now. And, and that's why, uh, you know, uh, LAPD at this point in time are really trying to come up with the best strategy uh, to try and get this to end without anyone being hurt. And you see now uh, that we don't have a patrol car right behind them any longer. They backed up just a little bit, and they do have the helicopter overhead. But we are coming up on uh, that transition road if he decides to get on the 101 freeway. He'll have to uh, merge to the right here, I believe. Yep. That is the 101. He did. And now we're coming up on Ventura Boulevard, and it looks like he's made a turn on Ventura Boulevard, headed back eastbound. Um, boy, it certainly is. And I think we're probably going to end up with a lot of stoplight traffic, uh, more than we saw there on Reseda Boulevard. And that just gets real dicey when traffic is stopped, 
And then here we go. This looks like it might be, uh, yeah, that's that little turnaround on-ramp. He missed one on-ramp off of Reseda, but there's another one once you're on Ventura Boulevard. And this is going to get him on the Ventura, the 101 freeway uh, headed eastbound now. Uh, we're basically in the Tarzana area. You continue eastbound. You come up uh, to Encino, Sherman Oaks, that kind of thing. Uh, but we did see speeds at, at 100 miles an hour or more on the freeway, and we know how dangerous that can be as well, immediately uh, speeding up and swerving into those left lanes. Yeah, I, I don't, okay, yeah, I, I don't have any, any information on that. At, at this point in time. Yeah, a little faster than the speed of traffic. You know, traffic on this freeway probably more than likely is going to be around 75 or so, uh, even though it's posted at 65. But now we see higher rates of speed. Yeah, it, we had it at 100 earlier. Um, we'll pull out a little bit. I want to see uh, if we can show you just how close the units are behind. And I think what they've done is uh, you can go back into the vehicle now, Chad. They've backed off. They've gone into tracking mode. They don't want to push this suspect to drive, um, you know, over 100 miles an hour to try and get away from the patrol cars. But the LAPD helicopter is overhead. There are other aircrafts overhead. And the possibility of, of getting away is extremely slim, just about impossible. Yeah, they're going to get him eventually, and we understand that CHP is probably going to take over again now that we're on the freeway. It's just they're a little more uh, set up to do that. But also all the law enforcement agencies uh, in front of this vehicle, say if the vehicle gets off here at Haskell before the 405. And by the way, we're going to come up on a patch of slow traffic here uh, just for a moment right at the 405 freeway interchange, but the suspect will be able to continue. But they're, they're uh, radioing forward. All the officers in these other areas coming up to, they'll know that the suspect is headed that way. CHP will coordinate it from this point in time because uh, they're, they're more prepared to take over these things when it's on the freeway uh, than the LAPD does is. But once it gets off, uh, then uh, LAPD officers will take over. They're more familiar with the surface streets and certain areas where they may be able to get this to end peacefully. But right now, it doesn't seem to me to pose the danger that it did when the, uh, we had the vehicle swerving in and out of traffic on Reseda Boulevard and Ventura Boulevard because you had pedestrians out. And even though we're seeing speeds 86, 90, even close to 100 miles an hour, the flow of traffic's probably around 75 because we don't have uh, that much uh, traffic out right now. So we're not seeing a situation that looks extremely dangerous. And I think that's why they backed off. They went to tracking mode. And they know uh, they're going to be able to follow him no matter where he goes. they got a helicopter overhead. If he gets low on fuel, they'll send another one. And they'll be able to follow this uh, vehicle to the end of the pursuit. Yeah, be, for me, it would be a complete guess. I have no idea uh, the range of that vehicle, whether it was full of gas or, um, or what kind of gas mileage it gets. Uh, but um, I have a feeling the suspect is going to make some decisions here pretty soon. A lot of times what we've seen, we've, we followed one just yesterday morning, and uh, we see the suspect. Maybe we'll try and get in front of him a little bit and look back, uh, and we can see. But a lot of times what happens, the suspect is on the phone. And in a lot of cases, on the phone with, you know, a family member, a loved one, or the police. And just trying to figure out, you know, what am I going to do? What have I done? What are my options here? Um, we haven't seen the suspect throw anything out of the vehicle, like maybe if he, uh, he was a burglary suspect and he had some merchandise that he stole that he tried to get rid of. We haven't seen that or heard about that. And you can see traffic is slowing down a little bit. There's a pocket of slow traffic. And we aren't seeing the suspect drive extremely erratically, and that is, that is good as far as safety is concerned.
Yeah, well, uh, we're going to see these types of conditions you're looking at right now as I look out my window on the Ventura Freeway eastbound all the way out towards the 170, the Hollywood Freeway split, or where the 134 starts before we're going to see a change. Um, at this point, though, the helicopter overhead is probably pretty content to just watch this guy and not tell the units to try and come up behind him and stop it. Uh, once he does get off the freeway, as I mentioned earlier, every off-ramp, and there's one coming up here, I've got my window, it might be Woodman, uh, every off-ramp, they're going to have units poised and ready to go in that area. And then their most effective technique to stop these things is that pit maneuver. When the suspect tries to make a turn, as long as the speed's down below, you know, in the 35 mile an hour range, I think once it gets up to 40, they, they hesitate to do it because the vehicle might flip. Uh, but below 40, uh, when they have that option, we will see that quite often. And uh, we'll just have to see. But now on the, the right shoulder, basically, uh, which gets dangerous because it's so tight. Um, but I believe this is going to be the Woodman off-ramp. Yeah, if you're not familiar, the mall is right here. Uh, if it makes a, a, a left turn, it would be northbound on Woodman. If you make a right turn, you're going to go down into Sherman Oaks towards Ventura Boulevard. And, you know, really, when you look at this, this scenario right here, it's really good that the patrol cars aren't right behind them, pushing them. And he, he would be doing what he was doing before. Could be. Are we all the way in, Chad? Yeah. Obviously. And uh, with no patrol cars right behind him at the moment, he's content to just stay there and not make uh, any erratic turns that could, could put people in danger. Uh, it looks like the truck driver might be looking at his window at the helicopters overhead. He may be getting an idea that something's going on. And as I look out the window, <laughs> yeah, you would think he would be. Uh, you would think he would be, but at this point, yeah, he seems to be uh, fairly calm considering the conditions of what we're looking at. Uh, so northbound on Woodman, crossing underneath the 101 freeway, and it looks like there may be another stop there. You can see that left turn from the transition road now. So um, this is a tricky situation because we can't see him, and neither can the LAPD helicopter overhead. And we've seen in a couple scenarios where the vehicle did get underneath an overcrossing, they got out of the vehicle. Now, we know that individual uh, was a white male had a blue shirt, it looked to me. Um, so they would be looking to see if someone, a pedestrian, starts to walk out. And then we need to make sure we don't lose them, but that looks like him right there. Now getting back on the Ventura Freeway and heading back westbound. Okay. Uh, no, he got off the eastbound side, got back on the Woodman on-ramp to the Ventura westbound. And I, I did get, uh, my Jerry and transmission was telling me it's an E60 or an E-series and a 16-gallon tank. Uh, you know, we have no idea. I don't know how many miles of gallons it gets. And we certainly hope at this point in time it doesn't continue on that long. Uh, this is the Van Nuys Boulevard off-ramp. And some indecision here. Uh, looks like he thought about it for a moment. Now, traffic is much heavier westbound on the 101. So it's going to be difficult, if not impossible, for him to continue without stopping. Um, and, you know, this really gets a little tough for the drivers as well. You know, the helicopter, if we pull out a little bit, you may see how low the LAPD helicopter is. He's going around in circles. You know, we hover and we, we look at things for the most part. They go around in circles. They have an observer. And they are directly overhead. So they're keeping an eye on him. And then everybody on the freeway sees the LAPD helicopter as well. And then they look at the vehicle coming at them, and a lot of times they don't know what to do. Since there aren't a bunch of units right behind them, it should stay pretty calm, and I think that's what they want. Yeah. No, they don't at this point because you don't have that, you know, row of uh, officers and patrol cars right behind them. So in the right lane, I think the next off-ramp is Sepulveda, and then past Sepulveda, if you continue westbound, uh, you have the option to get on the 405 freeway north or southbound. Um, I think both of those lanes right there will transition to either the 405 north or south, and then finally the far right lane puts you on the 405 north, which would put us back towards an area 
that we've already gone through. We went through the surface streets uh, up in North Hills, uh, off the 405 at Devonshire. Um, and we, when again, we just uh, hope this plays out and nobody gets hurt. Right now, it's just a waiting game, it's just a matter of time uh, before the suspect decides to you know, make a run for it. We see that a lot, we call it a foot bail. Maybe if he's looking out, doesn't see the helicopter overhead, doesn't see the patrol cars behind him, he'll get off uh, an off ramp and then get out on foot and try and make a run for it. Uh, we see that often. Looking right at us. Correct. Uh, you would think so. And we, we did see that yesterday morning. The suspect uh, went to an area that he was familiar with. Not certain if it was his house, but it, it would appear to family member, uh, mother, uh, you know, sister, whatever, came out uh, very close to the car, but the car didn't stop. And then the vehicle went around and went into the house. Uh, the suspect went into the house, and then that same female uh, went into the house uh, with him. So, yeah, that's what we've seen in a lot of cases. They're on the phone, even with a family member you know, a friend, say, what can I do? How can I get myself out of this thing? Uh, or even the police sometimes, and they're saying, hey, just give yourself up. Come on, uh, you, nobody's going to shoot you. If you obey the officers, uh, when you stop, don't worry. They'll be trying to calm the individual down. We're on the 405 northbound now, so we're headed uh, up towards the Van Nuys area. Uh, we're leaving the 101 freeway north on the 405, and what's encouraging right now compared to what we've seen from time to time, but the speeds are relatively slow. Yeah, I think this probably has been ongoing for uh, closer to an hour, uh, maybe, uh, you know, 50 minutes or so as it came northbound up on the 5 freeway. And that's since we knew about it. You know, a lot of times people don't know this, but the majority of pursuits end within the first two or three minutes. They light them up, somebody takes off, and they get out of their vehicle. So there's a lot of pursuits that never get to this point. Uh, once it gets to the point where the suspect just continues, even though there's 10 patrol cars behind him and a helicopter overhead, and now the rationale of what that individual is going to do comes into play. Uh, most individuals in a pursuit, once they get a patrol car behind them and they make a couple of turns, they either give up or they run. They foot bail. Um, this looks like we may be getting off of the freeway. Uh, if he stays in that right lane, 405 freeway northbound, uh, this looks like it's going to be the Victory Boulevard off-ramp, and I believe it is. So we're in Van Nuys at relatively slow pace right now, following the speed limit for the most part. And if he makes a right turn, he'll be uh, westbound on victory. An hour or ten. I was giving the, uh, we have about an hour or ten worth of uh, fuel left on board. Uh, Giovanna was just giving our our desk that information and yeah I believe that's why LAPD decided to pull off is when they saw those speeds you see they open up a little bit there's the LAPD helicopter so the guy's not getting away the guy also knows that helicopter is there and there's nothing he can do and we understand now they know who he is so they know who the suspect is that means they're gonna have an address that means they have a description um, that also means maybe if they don't catch him right now, it's not the end of the world because they're going to get him later. Uh, but they also know what he's wanted for. Uh, we believe it might be a stolen vehicle, and we did hear something, a possible burglary suspect. It could be a lot more than that. We, we don't know. So that, that may change their minds on whether or not they let this thing go, let him go, get him later, or they feel like, hey, this is a dangerous suspect and he has to be stopped immediately. Now, we're on Woodley southbound. We're coming down through the Sepulveda Basin. And this is an area where when he comes to the end of Woodley, you hit Burbank Boulevard, uh, where if PD does set up, there's a possibility they could try and get a spike strip out. It'd be a little difficult, but when you get a, a vehicle on a road like this where you don't have a lot of vehicles right next to it, it gives you the opportunity to try a spike strip uh, without flattening other vehicles' tires. 
So we're southbound on Woodley right now, uh, traveling uh, through the Sepulveda Basin down towards uh, Burbank Boulevard where Woodley ends. And then at that point, uh, he'll have to make a right turn and go either east or west on Burbank. That's possible, or it was stolen, and somebody put it out stolen. It was a family member, and he stole their vehicle. Or somebody knows the individual that stole their car, and they called it in, and he matches a description of that individual. West Valley Division has taken over, and they're going to back off, we heard. Now, things change from time to time. Um, if they felt the suspect um, you know, was a hardened felon who had committed murders, uh, that they would not back off. They'd be on him pretty pretty hard, and they'd, they'd want to take him into custody and make sure he didn't get away and hurt anyone else. So when we hear that um, West Valley has taken over, but they're backing off a little bit, it makes us think, hey, they know who this guy is. Maybe he's not wanted for a violent crime. Um, certainly we don't know that for certain. Uh, but it goes into their rationale, it goes into their thinking about how they're going to handle these pursuits. And now the suspect just took a right turn, and that's going to get him on the 405 South and some very heavy traffic here on the 405 South as you make your way down towards uh, the Ventura Freeway and then, uh, you know, down into the Sepulveda Pass. So we're in a bit of a pattern up the five in Burbank, around in circles in North Hills, into Northridge, down Reseda Boulevard, onto the Ventura Freeway and Ventura Boulevard for a moment, um, you know, then into Sherman Oaks and off at uh, uh, Woodman and then back on the 405 North, then off down Woodley and now back on the 405 South. So it looks like we have an area at least uh, in which the suspect is staying for the most part, and that would be this uh, northwestern end of the San Fernando Valley once he got up here. Well, he's back on that same stretch of freeway he was on a little bit ago. He took the 405 south to the Ventura, the 101 freeway eastbound. So um, headed uh, when we were here earlier, he was on the Ventura freeway eastbound, got off on Woodman, uh, took Woodman uh, north, and then uh, made his way back around, got right back on the Ventura freeway westbound, then the 405 north, then off at Victory and swerved around down Woodley and now back on the Ventura freeway eastbound. So there's certainly a pattern here. It seems to be a waiting game. The suspect is just talking with someone, trying to figure out what his plan is going to be. And uh, as long as he stays at these types of speeds and doesn't drive any more radically than he's driving right now, LAPD is real content. They have two helicopters overhead. Uh, they're very content to just keep an eye on him from the air and uh, wait until the suspect comes to his senses, gives himself up, or, you know, once he uh, would make a foot bail, get out of the vehicle and run for it, then you don't have this, you know, 5,000 pound weapon out there driving around at high speeds that could kill somebody. Um, they, they would rather have the individual on foot uh, for certain. And uh, you know, just no information on whether he's armed or not. It could be very difficult to get that. And it could be really difficult for them to know, you know, even a suspect that a burglary suspect and maybe doesn't come back a violent felon, but we did understand initially that he was a felon, wanted for uh, some type of felony. Yeah, they don't know. They have to treat this as if he does have a weapon. Yep, pretty much. I think we got off at Woodman last time. Uh, that's uh, basically the end of Van Nuys Boulevard, the, uh, the off-ramp onto Van Nuys Boulevard. If he makes a right turn, uh, if he comes out from behind there, looks like he was in the right lane. We may see him here in a moment. Uh, go down towards Ventura Boulevard to the south, makes a left turn, and go back underneath the uh, 101 freeway. And if he stays with the same pattern, uh, there he goes. He made a right turn, and now he's headed down towards um, Ventura Boulevard.
No, he, he has control of the vehicle. We, we, we've seen the turns that he's made have all been coordinated. So, if, you know, a lot of times you look at it and say, well, maybe drugs or alcohol are involved. He's not driving the vehicle like he's impaired, from what I can tell, from what I've seen from here. Uh, now we're on uh, Moore Park Street, and uh, this parallels Ventura Boulevard, just to the south of Ventura Boulevard. And um, we haven't been on, uh, it's on the north side of Ventura Boulevard, excuse me, uh, in between uh, Ventura Boulevard and the freeway. And we do see the vehicle slowing down, so I'm not certain if this is a plan for the suspect to come to this spot. Uh, it's the first time we've seen him on a surface street, a uh, small little surface street like this. And, uh, you know, hopefully that is the case. A lot of resources go into this um, as far as the police department is concerned, and they could be used in much better ways to protect the public than to have to, uh, you know, spend all this time, all this effort, supervisors on this, their... Uh, radioing to other units that have to be in place, or you see the hel LAPD helicopter go by. It, it's just it's just such a waste of time, and it, it's going to end. Absolutely. Um, yeah, LAPD had two helicopters uh, overhead, and they still do. A lot of times we'll see two just because one is getting low on fuel. The other one will uh, will sort of fly around a little bit and stay above the uh, the one that's lower. And then uh, the one, one takes off for fuel, the other one will take over. At this point, um, well, exactly why they have two overhead, I'm not sure. But there was two overhead a moment ago. And it may, have, it may just be one now. But, but th that's what we worry about. Now all of a sudden we see the suspect driving erratically at a high rate of speed on Moore Park. And there was a pedestrian crossing the street. And that was pretty close. Um, <coughs> obviously he's distracted. He's on his phone. He's worried about the police trying to, to take him into custody. And we've just seen so many of these things. And with people not only hurt but killed. I mean, l several pursuits that have followed. And with people uh, uh, being killed when the vehicle crashed. And it all comes down to those last couple of moments and the decisions that that suspect makes. Whether he's just going to go crazy and try and get away or he's just going to say, hey, this is nonsense and I'm going to give myself up. I think what you look at, Giovanna, when you watch something like this and you, you, you've tried to got into the, uh, the mind a little bit, if you will, of the suspects, is that he cares about his own life. And that's a good thing. He's not driving so erratically, and he's not trying to get away uh, from officers that are overhead, and he knows about that in such a manner that he's willing to do anything to do it, even put himself in harm's way. So when it comes to a red light, he'll run it, but he stops and he looks both directions to make sure nobody's going to run into him. That helps, and I think that always also helps the police in saying, back off, back off, this guy's not going crazy, let's not push him, let's follow him from the air, this can't go on forever, the car can only drive for so long, and eventually he's going to get tired, and we're, we're going to get him, and we just want to get him and nobody get hurt. Yeah. Now, we talked about this before, Giovanni. You know, we've seen suspects. I have several. They call somebody. They get under an, an overcrossing like this. And then this is the same overcrossing he was at before. And then there's the vehicle. So he continued on. And they hop into another car. Or they have a friend there. And they hop in their car. Um, but that was the same overcrossing that he went under when he got on the Ventura Freeway initially uh, here at Woodman and went back uh, westbound. Now he's continuing uh, on Woodman uh, to the north. All right, no problem. Okay, and if you're still with us on the web, we are following this uh, black Mercedes. Been leaving uh, officers on a pursuit now for probably over an hour. Started in Burbank. We're now in the uh, Sherman Oaks area, turning onto Riverside Drive. It's the first time a suspect has actually gone through a residential area, so we're not. It's not clear to us if possibly um, the suspect is familiar with this area, but. 
uh, for the most part. Uh, that is part of the uh, the mall right off of Woodman. And you can see he's on Riverside Drive there. We should uh, go a little bit further north, and then we could pick him up as he comes out uh, at that next uh, street there. Uh, we have seen suspects in the past go into a parking structure, park the car, and make a run for it. Uh, it's unclear if that may be what he will do. Uh, but for the moment, he's going to be uh, right there on Riverside Drive, coming up on that intersection um, at Hazeltine. And we lost him here for a second. But we've seen the uh, suspect drive it at some high speeds, over 100 miles an hour from time to time. I, I heard Giovanna there on the IP, so I didn't know, Jay, if she was back uh, covering the story. Okay, very good. I wasn't sure what that was. Um, uh, but at this point, the suspect continuing westbound on Riverside uh, in the Sherman Oaks area. LAPD is overhead. Uh, the good news when we follow along, um, what's encouraging at this point is the suspect isn't driving erratically like he was earlier. Uh, coming down Devonshire in the Northridge area, we had him traveling at really high rates of speed, uh, up to 70 miles an hour, swerving in and out of vehicles. And what has happened since then, uh, LAPD has uh, backed off. Uh, well, we're in Sherman Oaks, uh, just made a right turn on Van Nuys Boulevard off of Riverside Drive, uh, just north of uh, the Ventura Freeway, headed northbound. Uh, we saw him go through a little neighborhood at a very slow rate of speed. I thought for a moment there maybe it was uh, a neighborhood he was familiar with and he was going to get out of the vehicle, uh, but uh, that did not happen. But certainly uh, ever since uh, officers backed off, they went into tracking mode, his demeanor or the way he's been driving the vehicle has calmed down quite a bit, and, that, and that's good for the safety of everyone. I think you might be making a left turn there. And this is uh, a somewhat of an industrial area. There's a lot of car dealerships in here. But as it continues down that street, we're into another residential area. We never know when we see this. We saw him go in patterns. He's broken off of that pattern now and gone into a neighborhood. You never know if he is familiar with that neighborhood. Maybe he's headed towards his home or a friend's home. Um, and uh, it, it's hard to say at this point. LAPD has a helicopter overhead, but they're still choosing to back off and not put patrol cars right behind them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It would be safer for the public. And what we've seen from him, though, is he's been driving uh, fairly calmly over the last uh, 15 to 20 minutes. We saw that real high rates of speed on Devonshire coming southbound through Northridge up to 70 miles an hour and was probably posted at 35 and swerving in between vehicles. Uh, but that was when patrol cars were behind him. They backed off, and that has really been a good strategy from what we can tell in Air 7 HD as far as possible potential for uh, you know, danger to the public. Um, we're south on Kester. There's the 101 freeway. He's been on the 101 freeway, I think, three times now uh, in this same neighborhood. So it seems to be focusing on the Sherman Oaks area uh, down here by the Galleria here in a moment as he continues southbound. Um, we've seen him go under a couple of overcrossings and then come back out. He didn't try and make a run for it uh, when he was uh, hidden from the police officers. We've seen him on the phone. We don't know if he's talking to uh, friends or family or if he's you know, speaking with the police at this point. Uh, but it, at least at this point, Giovanna, it doesn't appear that there's a lot of danger to the public. So uh, we feel good about that. Yeah. Oh, boy, there you go. He does not like to stop. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, no, absolutely not. And we see that in most cases when the suspect stays in the same area. And he stayed sort of in the same area, but on different streets just about every time. You know, once off Van Nuys Boulevard, once off on Woodman, then down towards Kester, then winding around, it looks like probably down towards Ventura Boulevard again. Usually when we see a suspect who wants to get that type of attention and people come out to get uh, some notoriety or get their attention, it's usually that suspect going around in one certain area. Um, and But as you mentioned, yeah, certainly you don't do that. I mean, the police, they don't want you to do that. You don't know what this guy's going to do more than anything. We've seen the vehicle stop without a patrol car behind him, and he does not like to be stopped. You can tell he gets very nervous. He darted into oncoming traffic for a moment so he could get around some stopped vehicles and get on Ventura Boulevard. So you're know, dealing with somebody who's uh, willing to do something like that to get away from just being stopped, not even police because the police weren't there. Uh, then you wouldn't want to be the guy walking across the street trying to get his attention uh, when he might do something uh, erratic and dangerous and hit you. So it, it certainly don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> open up, open up. We believe that he went into the Sherman Oaks Galleria parking lot. Um, and if that is the case, that's a strategy we've seen before. Um, if suspects want to get away, they'll, the north side parking lot. Okay, we understand he's on the back side, so we'll keep looking here. Um, it looks like what he did is he got off and he took the, uh, the surface street that would put you into the parking structure. And if we understand the information that we're getting, come down, come down. It'll be right next to the parking structure right there and I believe he's gonna be going around the corner and then driving. We're trying to determine exactly where, where he is, Giovanna. We get a lot of information and then uh, it's hard once he goes into an area like that, as you can tell, for us to follow him. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of times if the suspect does go into a parking structure, it can be, no, it'll be on Camarillo. It'll be straight down on Camarillo, uh, on Camarillo, which is that street right there. So push in by the trees, that's where we believe he may he may have stopped um, or gone into the parking structure. Um, we don't believe so, no. We're, we're hearing radio traffic that they believe that he's in the parking structure. And then once that happens, a, as you can tell, it becomes extremely difficult. Now what police have to do is you know, shut down the mall for the most part or if they can, quickly shut down the parking structure. And it looks like westbound on Camarillo, push straight in, that's Camarillo right there, if I'm not mistaken. So if he's not in the parking structure and he's westbound on Camarillo, he's right down in there somewhere. Is that the vehicle? Push straight in, please. Nope, that's not it. Is that him right there, stopped? Nope, that's not it. So we get these reports, westbound on Camarillo, um, It looks like he might be right inside and he may have crashed into a stairwell of some type. Police have eyes on him, we believe, off of Camarillo inside the parking structure. If you're just joining us, we're over the Sherman Oaks Galleria. Uh, we believe the vehicle may have struck a stairwell or may have stopped right next to the stairwell. And uh, we're not certain if he got out of the vehicle and made a run for it. Uh, but it looks like at this point uh, the suspect is inside the parking structure here at the Galleria. Yeah, it really does. I don't know if they'll evacuate the entire mall, but I think what they'll do is they'll start setting up officers at all the checkpoints and they'll go through the mall. Um, unless they get some more information that the suspect is actually armed. If they get a, a report that he has a weapon, then I think that they, they may uh, actually evacuate the entire mall. I would think for anyone watching right now, though, don't come to the Galleria. We don't know what's going to happen here. It could be that you won't get into the stores. It, it, you know, it could be, just stay with us, it could be that the suspect will be in custody here in a few moments and this will all be over. Uh, but if that's not the case and he runs into a portion of the mall, um, then they have to set up a, a perimeter here. They may shut down some streets. So uh, at this point in time, until we get more information, if you were headed here to do some shopping, I don't think it'd be a good idea at this point until we uh, you know, sort of get more information on uh, whether the suspect's in custody or not.
Alright, alright. That's not many. Yeah, you can't shut down them all in six units. Okay. It wouldn't surprise me if they have a real good idea where this guy is, although they didn't have a unit right behind him, so. Oh, they do? Okay, good. That's who, uh, that's who uh, had him in sight, or that's who saw him hit the stairwell. So they didn't have too many units right behind the guy. Okay, yeah. I'll, um, okay. Sure. 